I've always been interested in laser etching and cutting, and our friends at geekbuying.com sent us this Sculpt Fun S30 Max that also has air assist. And so I've been working with it for the past several months, and it's been a lot of fun, and I've had a lot that I've learned. And my friend, thankfully, Asylum Life has taken a lot of time to help me because he understands so much more about this than I do. So first of all, I want to talk about putting it together. <laughs> First, putting it together is pretty simple. It's tightening some screws. You don't have to fiddle with belts. It's very straightforward. And if you ever put a 3D printer together, it's pretty much a breeze. If you haven't, it's well documented and it shouldn't be too hard. Before we do anything else, we have to talk about safety because look at this machine. It's wide open and yet it has a laser that's powerful enough to burn through plastic, wood, and it could even blind you. And we don't want anyone with eye damage. So you always wear eye protection first and foremost. And the second thing is, this isn't a laser like the kind that you point at the wall for your cat to jump at. This thing is serious business. So you'll want to calibrate the settings for each type of material that you're using to get the best results. So these are little calibration tests and I love them because it shows an immediate visual result. And you're looking at the speed the laser is moving as well as the power. You may have noticed that some of the initial projects I showed in the first video were not as refined as you might expect, and this really has nothing to do with the capabilities of the Sculpt Fun Laser. This is 100% operator and experience. I was new to this, and so after that video, I did spend some time, I ran these calibration tests, and I learned a lot about how this Sculpt Fun works. It was really fun. In order to control the results you want, you're going to need to control the wattage, which is the intensity of the laser, and the speed, which is how fast it's moving across the medium that it's etching or burning or cutting. And these tables are great. They show the percentage of power of the laser, and it also shows the speed at which it's moving. And you can see this is a fill, so you can figure out where you want to be with the fill, and then this one is line. And I find this is really interesting that some of them are actually cutting all the way through because of the amount of power and speed. So this was really illuminating. I could learn a lot of information from this. So I wanted to mention that these calibration tests are included with a product, Lightburn. And this is the laser cutting product that I'm familiar with. But I also wanted to mention that there is an included product from Sculpt Fun as well, and both work. All right, now that I've gone through all of those tests and I'm ready to print something and have it look great, I want to get back to safety. And that's because even though I had it sitting here, I was not printing here. And that's because I'm on a wooden desk, I'm in an enclosed small room, and I don't have my glasses on. I took this outside and I put it on a table and I have this honeycomb laser bed that you also can get to go with it and it helps to dissipate heat. And I also always kept around a fire extinguisher. But not only that, what if something did go wrong? What I would do is I had this really great fire blanket and I just felt it was like a safety blanket, right? Because if anything did go wrong, you take it, you throw it over the whole thing and it would put it out. So I felt better doing this outside. So instead of buying expensive material and then messing it up, a great idea is to get these little wooden coasters. They're about the same width as the other material. And then you can run your tests on what you saw here. Now that I have a good idea what preferences I like for line and fill, I got ready to actually do some prints. Now, some of the things that you want to consider is there's not one right answer here. You might be looking for a certain color. You might be looking for a certain coverage if you're looking for fill or line. It depends on if you're trying to get a deeper cut or again, a dark darker uh, coloration. So then I started doing some prints. Uh, I started with the Filament Stories logo. It's an easy go-to for me. I did some of these. They were okay. And then I was like, you know what I want to do? I want to work on Asylum Life Makes logo because he's been a real help to me with all of this. And the first one, as you can see at the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing. You can start seeing his logo and it got better, but the last two were great. And what really helped me is I rode the settings on the back. And so I like these a lot and I'm looking forward to giving it to him. So then I did a little bit with the line, more tests, and then this is one of my favorite laser engravings. And this is just beautiful and it has a little delicacy to it, but it's also exactly enough to see all the details. So I did a few more. This one is perhaps my favorite from the detail. And when I first started working with the Sculpt Fun, there's no way I would have been able to do this. And now I understand so much more. And I've got one more thing that I've been working on 
and this is sort of an experiment and it's based on this same image of a girl looking out the window and seeing constellations in the sky and so I use that same image and I'll tell you that there's a lot of blue tape and silver paint here and if I get it working I'm going to show you in another video because I'm hoping it looks really cool. All right, what are the specs on this Sculptfun S30 Pro Max? Well, first of all, it is a 20 watt diode laser and it moves in the X direction on a linear rails and it has V slot wheels to move on the Y dimension. Now it has a 450 by 500 working area millimeter and you can get an expansion kit that it will take it all the way up to like 800 by 800 millimeters if you have big stuff to work on. It also has this air assist unit, which is quite nice. It connects in and it blows air directly under the laser housing itself. It keeps dust off it and it also helps to reduce temperature with the laser itself. Now you can cut up to 15 millimeters in wood and 10 millimeters in acrylic and it works on all sorts of other materials including press board and whatnot and you can find this over on geekbuying.com. It's around I think $800 at time of recording and they also have additional add-ons and things that you can get to go with it. Now I've worked with two other materials so let's go and see what those look like. So these are coated aluminum and these are like $10 I don't know for 100 it's something it's really economical and so I ran a couple of tests on it to figure out how I could get the coating to come off and leaving the aluminum intact and then after that you can just go to town and have fun with them and this is I think my favorite thing this is my business card. Look at that. So in summary, I've had a lot of fun working with this Sculpt Fund laser. I've learned a lot and it's just been interesting to see what I can do with a tool that isn't a 3D printer. So this is the last thing I worked with and this is some acrylic or plexiglass. And I have to show you my final project that is without a doubt my favorite one. I would never have thought that I ever had a tool that I could do something like this at home. Geekbuying.com, thank you for sending this over. And guys, I'll leave some links, of course. Go check it out. Okay, is that a wrap? Yeah. Can we go to lunch? Yeah. All right. Let's do it.